Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing for more house plant content. Today is going to be a plant chore day. So obviously I got a lot of plants in my collection. So I'm going to be going through uh, some of these plants and giving them some water. Got to clean up some leaves. Uh, they're all looking pretty dusty and dirty. So I'm going to uh, maybe take a couple larger ones outside and spray them off. Um, but just uh, do some general plant care maintenance. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get started. Whenever I plan for a chore video day, I always wake up in the mornings, I have my coffee, and then I just start going around my plants and seeing which ones need water. So I completely forgot that I was gonna do that today, so I already started watering a couple. This is a Diefenbachia Seguin, I believe it's called. Um, I did buy one off of uh, Facebook Marketplace and I have a larger stem over there, I'll show you in a second. But this one, I just tried to propagate uh, from stem cuttings and it's, I got two of them, so there's another one over there. Um, but this one's uh, definitely uh, growing quite nicely. But this morning I noticed there was a little bit of yellowing on the leaf here. And upon closer inspection, there was a few little spider webs um, behind it. So these are pretty prone, these Diefenbachias are pretty prone to spider mites. So I took it over to the sink, basically just ran it under the filtered water, uh, gave it some water. Um, and that's basically what I do for spider mites right now. Um, it's, most times I can catch it when it's very, very um, minor, I guess. There wasn't many webs, it was just a few on the back of the leaf. So I can usually catch it pretty quick and basically just blast them off with uh, some water. You can basically put it underneath the tap or you can take it outside and hose it off. Um, so I've already done that with this. But one of the chores today is I'm gonna clean out all these saucers as well because not only is that dirt, but it could also be harboring some bugs and pests. So I like to bring it over to the sink, spray it off with hot water. And then I like to use this Dawn, I don't know, dish soap stuff and I just spray it in. And then I just clean out the saucers. Much easier to do obviously with two hands but that's okay. It also might be getting a little bit of yellowing or fading because I do have it in my self facing window. Here's the other one. And it does get like bright direct light for most of the day. So I think I'm gonna have to uh, move it over to the plant table here. Here is the uh, original cutting that I took this plant off. So it was basically one long stem. I snipped it off into uh, two stem propagations. I propagated uh, this one in water and it's now in soil. It's gotten a new leaf, another one coming in. Don't mind all the dishes there, but this is what I do. So this is filtered water and I just spray off. Oh geez, this thing's falling out. I uh, rinse off the leaves front and back. Okay, this is not working out. I gotta add more soil because clearly some soil fell out on the ground. Okay, huge failure with the Diefenbach. Yeah, this thing was ready to flop out. Anytime you uh, water your plants in the sink um, and if something like a, the soil spills over into the sink, just make sure you don't like flush this down the drain just because this will clog your pipes. So just remove all the perlite and uh, basically the little pieces of soil and sticks. Here's my large Birds of Paradise that I have currently down in my basement. It's underneath some grow lights. It's doing really, really well, but it is super dry, so it needs some water. I'm also gonna take this outside and just spray off the leaves of any dust or debris. They look pretty clean. Here's one of the newest leaves. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I also wanna spray this off just for the fact that um, these are pretty uh, susceptible to spider mites. Usually you'll find some webs kind of on the back of the leaves. Really difficult to see um, just in plain sight. But what I like to use is a little flashlight. And when you put the flashlight behind the leaf, it will sometimes illuminate like the very small fine webs um, from the leaves. And um, it uh, just makes it a little bit easier to identify spider mites. See like right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's just, it looks like some very faint webs right here. You can see the flashlight just slightly illuminating them there. So there is some little spider webs. Sometimes just a regular spider will find a home in your plant. You want to make sure you catch them before it gets out of hand. So I'm gonna spray this off and give it some water. Whoopsies. And Pickles is back here as well. Chilling in your bed, hey? Yeah, oh. Okay, you gonna come outside too? You gonna bark at the neighbor's dog? Okay, let's take this outside again. It's really hard to do with one hand. 
Don't mind my socks and sandals. Okay. Come on. So I'm gonna do it kind of in the shade over here, just so it doesn't burn the leaves. You hear your friend? Where's your friend? Okay. So whenever I spray off my plants, I have it on the shower setting and this looks like it might tip over. So basically what I do is I start from the bottom and basically work my way up. So I'll spray it off. That way it gets underneath the leaves here. I'm just gonna rotate it around and make sure I get the other set of leaves. Even the smaller ones at the bottom here. You want just enough force to uh, knock, you know, dust in these webs off, but uh, not enough that it's going to damage the leaves. And you want the hose, hey? Okay. Oops, that's not the one. She goes crazy. Hey, this thing's an absolute monster. I just have it on the counter here, but just take a paper towel and just clean off the leaves. Just uh, dry them off. Make sure that there's no water settling on it. If you spray off your plants, just make sure that it's not in direct sunlight or basically don't let them dry in direct sunlight just because it, these uh, little water droplets basically just act like a magnifying glass and it will burn your leaves. I like to clean off the leaves. Um, this way, if any of the webs or dust uh, didn't get blasted off with the hose. This is just, a, I guess, an added uh, protection, uh, making sure that you uh, get all those webs off, um, especially underneath the leaves and just on the stem. This next one is my large uh, Agalinema BJ Freeman. This one's in my basement as well. It's right beside the Birds of Paradise. It's getting a few yellow leaves. Um, I know I've been underwatering this. Um, the soil is always extremely dry and uh, these leaves are lower on the stem so that's uh, either it's pushing out new growth or it's telling me it needs uh, more water than what i'm giving it so it's got a few yellow leaves you can uh, snip them off with uh, some pruning shears or you can just like peel away at uh, some of the debris i'm just going to turn this one around here see if i can do it here's another yellow leaf uh, lower in the stem not too concerned about it and basically just pull it off the stem, comes off pretty easy. I like to let them get yellow like this, basically until the plant is ready to dispose of it. Um, it's really easy to take off and it doesn't harm or leave any uh, open wounds on the stem. Got another one over here. Don't know if it's quite ready uh, as it still has a little bit of green in there. And let's see if we can pull it off. Oh yeah, this one's coming off nice. Okay, so it's just a nice, easy, clean removal. No damage to the plant. I do have a magnifying glass as well that I like to use for inspecting plants. Doesn't look like anything on these leaves. Uh, that's the nice thing about uh, Aglinemas is, is they're pretty well resistant to bugs, uh, or spider mites, I mean, um, but they are prone to mealybugs. Um, so yeah, I just always Look mine over, make sure that there is no white fluff or white spots on the leaves. I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, Aglaenema here, but I'm going to add my little dead leaves to my compost. Are you ready for more water? Oh yeah, let's turn it to the shower. Okay, again, just like the other plant, I'm gonna spray underneath the leaves, just lightly. Turn it around, rotate it. Oh, we're getting a new little growth in there. These leaves are absolutely beautiful. It's got a nice kind of uh, green silvery sheen to them. Just a beautiful plant. This one is constantly putting out new growth. You can see down here. So this is where I have the two plants right now, um, just kind of behind my little plant workshop area. I'm actually gonna turn off this grow light uh, for the same reason as you don't wanna do this in direct sunlight because um, if you don't clean off the leaves right away, this light will basically, uh, or these water drops will basically act like a little magnifying glass and you could get some 
uh, burning on the leaves. So until this dries off, I'm just going to turn that grow light off. And uh, yeah, got my little fan pointed in that direction as well. Give them a little bit of airflow, some circulation. But yeah, this is my little workshop area right now. It's coming along very nicely. Uh, I did put up a little poll on YouTube a little while ago about uh, what I should do with my larger jade plant. And basically I took it from the upstairs down to the basement. It's on this uh, little wood table. It's my grandfather's um, and it's underneath the grow light. So I decided to keep it. It's gonna stay down here and I think it looks absolutely wonderful there. So this is my little workshop area right now. And those two guys are back there. I'm gonna start off with my full sun plants, uh, my succulents here first. Uh, I'm just gonna go through and see if they uh, need some water. Uh, these plants get sun all day long. Uh, there is no clouds in the sky. I'm in one of the sunniest places in Canada and it probably hasn't rained here in like a month. It's just sun all the time. So these succulents, they tend to just soak up the water pretty quick. So. Uh, one thing I like to look for on succulents in particular is if you could bend the leaves. Uh, succulents have very thick, plump leaves and you shouldn't be able to bend them or anything like that. So this one you can see is just really flimsy and it's even got a little bit of wrinkling to it. So this one is in need of some water as probably the rest of them here as well. So actually this one's okay. This one's pretty firm. It's not really bendable. Uh, these ones a little bit flimsy. So this one's going to need some water, not wrinkly. And this one, um, this one's okay. I'm not gonna water it right now. Same with, oh, this one you can almost fold over completely. So got a couple that I gotta water. So let's take this one over here first. Oh, this is my Gollum Jade. This was taken off of just like a small little cutting from one of the plants at the uh, Regina uh, Floral Conservatory. One of the old ladies said uh, I could have a cutting, just took some scissors and snipped it off. Okay, and it's got a little uh, leaf propagations in the bottom there. So this one, I'm going to give it some water, let it drain through. I'm not gonna add any fertilizer right now as it doesn't look like it's uh, actively pushing out any growth. So I'm gonna hold off on fertilizer uh, for probably the rest of the uh, year until uh, springtime, unless I start to see some new growth popping out uh, throughout the winter, I might give it some fertilizer, but uh, basically cut the recommended dose in half. In the next probably month or so, I'm gonna start slowly cutting back on my watering as well. So right now I probably water maybe once every two weeks, maybe a week and a half. Again, just checking on the leaves. It's like severely underwatered right now. So I might have to keep an eye on it for uh, another watering, maybe in a week or so. But in the winter, yeah, just slowly cut back your watering as they do not require as much water um, as they're not uh, actively growing. It's coming out the bottom of the drain hole now. So I'll let that soak through and then I'll grab the other ones and give those ones some water too. Here's another aglinema that I watered last night. It was looking pretty droopy. The leaves have perked up a little bit. Here's a, uh, a ZZ plant. Um, yeah, this one I've done uh, repotting with before as it was uh, super root bound. These leaves need to be cleaned. I don't think I'm gonna do it right now, but um, I'll probably spray it off later. It does not need any water at this time. Um, I sprayed off uh, my Ficus Alaska. Here's the Melanie that was sprayed off yesterday as well. Give it a good thorough watering. Here are the Syngoniums that I have in the bottom of the plant and it's filling in quite nicely. So I really like the way it looks. And here's my other ficus. It's getting some direct sunlight now. Oh, here's another Eglinium. It's gotten a yellow leaf. This one, uh, I know I watered a couple days ago. It's a little bit damp, about an inch down. So I'm not going to water it, but I am going to see if I can pull this leaf off. There. Okay, this one's getting some direct sunlight. It's not burning the leaves. Oh man, they're dirty. Gotta clean that one too. There's another one that uh, I recently watered. So that one, yeah, it's still a little bit damp. I know this uh, Aglinema Key Largo needs to be watered. Look at these leaves, stunning. Just a silver streak with some speckling. A uh, very dark leaf. Okay, this one is super light. The soil is dry. So let's take this one over here. Give it some water. Mm 
Again, just look over the plants, just make sure that um, there's no bugs or insects. And again, these aglinemas, they're a little bit prone to mealy bugs, so just check underneath the leaves. Everything looks really clean on this. Looks really good. Again, it was really light when I first picked it up, but now it's got a little bit of weight to it. I'm gonna let this drain through, and then I'll put it back on its little saucer. Actually, I'm gonna go clean it, see if it needs to be cleaned. Okay, yeah. And let's see, sometimes there's, oh yeah, you can see a few little bugs moving around in there, just at the bottom. So that's why I like to clean these off. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on this. See that little guy? I have no idea what those are, but I assume they are springtails, which they are pretty well harmless. They, uh, as far as I know, they basically just eat up any organic material. Uh, in the soil they don't harm the plants but you can see they're moving around there so that's why i like to clean out these saucers i'm suspecting them to be springtails i have no idea but obviously there's no damage on the leaves hot water and dawn dish soap for you okay it's not hot right now but i'm just rinsing it off and then crank it to hot Just wanted to make mention that it is now officially fall time and here in Canada, um, or where I am specifically, the sun is a lot lower in the sky. Uh, so in the summertime, it's basically like straight above. Uh, these plants will only get uh, direct sunlight throughout the summer months, but now that it's fall time and in winter, the sun will be lower in the horizon. So a lot of these plants that did not get any direct sunlight throughout the summer are now getting some, obviously you can see the sunlight on the leaves. And these ones, like these aglinemas, they're typically classified as kind of those low light plants, but I'm just showing you this so that if you place a low light plant in high light, just make sure that you slowly transition it. These plants have been here for quite a while, so they are accustomed to the higher light and there is no leaf burn. So same with, same with this uh, Syngonium, like it's a very delicate leaf, but it's getting direct sunlight and it loves this spot. So this goes to show you that even though there are low light plants, um, you can move them to higher light, but just make sure that you slowly transition it. Same with over here, here's a Silver Bay um, Aglinema. It's literally right next to a south facing window. Um, it faces east, so it gets a lot of morning, bright morning sunlight. But again, it's just, it does so well. Here's another Key Largo. All these plants right now, at some point throughout the day, get some uh, direct sunlight. I'm sure this video is getting pretty long, but I'm going to water my cactus now. It's got some little uh, Echeveria purposorum in there as well. It seems to flower quite often in the winter months and it gets these very vibrant uh, pink flowers. They're absolutely gorgeous. This is actually my son's cactus. He uh, picked this out after reading his first chapter book. So it's uh, gotten quite large, very bulbous. It was just a small little pincushion cactus, but it's uh, grown quite a bit. So I'm gonna give this one a lot of water haven't watered it for a while. It does not have a drain hole at the bottom. So this one I have to be cautious with, just make sure I'm not overwatering it. And again, just uh, judge by the uh, soil, if it's dry and the weight of the pot. Right now it's really heavy. Place this one back. Here's my Euphorbia white ghost. It uh, was right here was the initial cutting and it's uh, grown a new portion up top there, and it's got a couple little arms. So it looks like a little person right now. Ooh, the pot is hot. That's a hot sun today. So because it is so hot out right now, I might actually put these uh, curtains down just so it can give these plants a little bit of a break. Um, it's, it's super hot right now. So I'm gonna pull these sheer curtains down, give them some shade. And I used my flashlight yesterday, and I know there is a few little webs like you can see right there. That's why I like using this flashlight you can see the webs much easier. See those little webs? So I'm going to spray this one off and give it some water. And again, I'm just going to kind of dip it underneath the, uh, the faucet here and uh, blast those off. So that's basically all I'll do for spider mites is uh, just blast them off and I might spray it down later on if they keep coming back. 
If you want to spray off a plant, but you don't want the soil to get wet, I always put my, oh shoot, I just poked myself. I uh, put my plants in a bag and that way it uh, keeps the soil intact. It doesn't uh, get completely saturated as well. And I'm not going to scrub it because these have little spikes, but I'm just going to rinse it off. I'm just gonna support it here and rinse the entire plant off. I'm gonna rotate it around, making sure I don't poke myself. Just get all the edges. You will get some water in the, uh, in the pot there, but this just minimizes it, I guess. So I'm going to just rinse it off. I'll uh, stick it under the uh, light as well, just to see if there's anything left on the plant. But this is probably enough force to dislodge any of those small little webs and blast off these spider mites. Okay, so I know I'm getting some water in the bag, so let's check it out. Oh shoot, I poked myself again. Okay, so we got a little bit of water in there, but you can see the majority of the soil is still dry. It keeps your sink clean for the most part. Okay, so let's see. Looks like it did a pretty good job. I don't see any spider webs anymore. So I would recommend doing this maybe every few days for the next uh, week or two. And that way it uh, basically just blasts them off. So that's how I deal with spider mites. Uh, let me know down in the comment section if you have a different method, if you use like an insecticidal soap or something like that or neem oil. But I know those can be pretty harsh on some uh, plants. So yeah, looks like I uh, sprayed them all off. Looks like it's good to go. I'm gonna give it maybe a little bit more water here. And that's that. I think the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, change out the water in this container. I was just gonna basically top it up with some fresh water, but it stinks, like it, it reeks. So I'm gonna take it over to the sink here. Uh, this is my golden Hawaiian pothos. Um, it started losing a little bit of its variegation or it wasn't highly variegated. So I stuck it in this uh, container of water and I put it in my south facing window and look at this leaf, like look at the variegation that's coming in. It's absolutely gorgeous and the stem is yellow. So it's gonna be, um, highly variegated so yeah anyways um, it is all water roots I've been adding some um, diluted fertilizer oh this is gonna stink I don't know why it smells like sewer water oh god I don't know why it stinks like that just gonna let that fill up and rinse it out just flush it out so I think that's going to be permission for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below. Let me know what you thought of this video as well. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching. Take care, everyone. Let that flush. Okay, see you later.